Hey guys, feast your eyes on this. It's my brand new Coolmaster Quick Fire Rapid Keyboard. It's also called a QFR. Uh, it's got Cherry MX brown switches, and I'll talk all about that and everything that's inside and exactly what this means. So this keyboard is special because it's what's called a mechanical keyboard. Uh, sometimes you'll also see them called uh, mechanical gaming keyboards, but the gaming, it's just a marketing term. And in fact, the graphics of this whole box are, are quite uh, marketing based. This has advantages and is great to use well beyond gaming. It's not just for gaming, this is for everybody who loves a keyboard. And as enthusiasts, I, I think that, you know, this, this talks to us really well. So, tell you what, what I'm going to do, open this up and we'll start talking about the advantages and the beauty of a mechanical keyboard and what it means for you. Okay, first up here, uh, it's kind of fallen in the way there. Uh, first up is a, a PS2 connector. Uh, you'll find a lot of the community is really quite concerned about PS2 connections over USB. Here's the keyboard itself. Let's just put that to side for a second. This is the uh, user manual. Not much information in there. Though there is uh, product registration info, uh, which will be important. Uh, and then under here, we've got the braided USB cable. Uh, it's a high quality cable. Again, a lot of this is uh, high quality. And here we have some replacement keys and a key puller. And we'll get to use those in a few minutes. Let's just put this away for a sec and have a look at the keyboard. Now the mechanical keyboard is quite expensive, especially compared to most of my videos which are about low cost computers like Raspberry Pis. But if you spend as much of your day typing as I do, the benefits of one of these keyboards is pretty obvious. This is like a really nice pen. And if you're somebody who uses a Bic pen or maybe doesn't know where he got all the pens that he uses, then this video is for you because this is worth paying attention to to figure out where you're gonna get your next keyboard from. If you use it as often as I do, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So just to explain kind of what a mechanical keyboard is, the best thing to do is to grab another keyboard uh, that's similarly priced, but it's not as good. And you guys will probably be pretty familiar with this. This is just the uh, Apple wireless keyboard. So what I'm gonna do, just uh, pull off one of these switches here. I'll just grab this one. It's not as easy as you might think. Pull off a switch. So what you do is you pull off two corners like that. And you can see underneath it here. So there's the, there's the key. It's a very thin little chiclet piece of plastic. And underneath, you can see, there's a little rubber dome. See that little rubber dome? And that little rubber dome is surrounded by a little piece of plastic. That's a, it's, it's a scissor piece of plastic. What it does is that pushes the key uh, back out and holds it uh, at the right distance. And that little rubber dome is what you're depressing. And when you hit the bottom of it, that's when the key knows that it's been depressed. And that's how this thing works. Okay. By contrast, this is a mechanical switch. So I'm just gonna grab one here. In fact, I've got a key puller to do it. This is, this is just a key puller. So what you can do, just slide it down the sides here, grab onto the key, and gently pull it out. So what you can see here, oh, we'll just give it a second to focus in. I know it's, uh, it's black, so it's quite dark, but you can see there's a little plus sign in there and a little column. It's just a black key. But underneath, we have this little mechanical switch. And all that switch does is just go up and down. Now these switches are manufactured by a company called Cherry. And I'll talk more about Cherry in a second. I just want you to see that switch and how it works.
Okay, so let's talk about cherry switches. On the screen now, I'm going to show you a couple of different varieties. The one that I have here is called a brown or T-switch, which has that tactile feedback or a little bump on the way down to let you know when the key is pressed. You can't hear it, but I can feel the depression as it goes down. There are other switches like clicky switches, like the Cherry MX Blues, that have both tactile feedback and a click. There's noise there that lets you know that the stroke has happened, and there's also the clack as it reaches the bottom of the chain. Cherry also makes two other very popular switches. One is the Cherry MX Red, and the other is the Cherry MX Black. These are non-tactile switches. They don't have clicks, and unlike the brown, these will need to bottom out. You'll need to hear the clack to know they've been pushed. I'm told that the browns and the blues are better for typing, and that the reds and the blacks are better for gaming, but there's no reason you can't use the switch for either. You can buy a switch tester, but I didn't because I already knew what I wanted. Now before I made this video, I contacted several keyboard manufacturers for this video, asking them to send me different keyboards with different types of switches, and their answer was a resounding no. I specifically asked companies that weren't associated with gaming, as I think the majority of people who watch my videos are more likely to be enthusiasts than gamers. And they said no. Some politely, some not so politely. But when they refused, what I did, I decided to look for an affordable board that I could modify and customize to make my own. That's why I chose the QFR or the Quickfire Rapid. As a non-gamer, I wanted something that wasn't too bling, it didn't have fancy backlights or massive logos everywhere, and I chose the brown or T-switch because it's going to be quieter in an office environment where this thing will live. So let's just do a quick sound comparison here, because I've got these two keyboards and you know the microphone distance. Now by comparison, move this out of the way. That's the sound difference. Now, one of the things to talk about is that through the customizations available for the mechanical keyboards, you can actually get sound dampening. And I'll talk more about what that means later. But I just want to say that the, the loudness that you can hear is the clack of it reaching the bottom, which is different than the activation, which I can feel, but you can't hear. It means you can actually type much lighter on these, but I, I think it'd be very difficult to do. Now, just so you know, when you're getting ready to uh, delve into the mechanical keyboard market, there are different sizes of keyboards available. This one is called a TKL, or 10 keyless. One that would be the same size as this would be known as an 84 key, or even smaller than this, one that eliminates the F keys and the arrow keys, is called a 60% or just a 60. So if you imagine a 60, then the 84, then the TKL or 10 keyless, and then there's the full keyboard, which also includes the number pad to its side. Now, I didn't feel that I needed the number pad. If I'd like one, I can always get another one and I can store it on the left-hand side instead of on the right, so I don't have to reach further out for my mouse, but that's a personal choice. Some people really like having them. I know a lot of people who do data entry, and for them it would be crazy to think of getting a computer with that one. Okay, so now you understand that there's a whole bunch of different varieties to buy these amazing mechanical keyboards. And, if you take my word for it, they're a pleasure to type on. You can buy the sample switches, but I also want to suggest a couple of good places to look when you're thinking about buying your first mechanical keyboard. The first is MassDrop. MassDrop is a great place to go. Uh, they often have deals that you won't find anywhere else, and they're great. The other is on Reddit, r forward slash Mac market. There you'll find people who are getting rid of their old 
uh, if not their first purchases or purchases they're just unhappy with, you'll find that the prices haven't dropped significantly from when they first bought them, but that's just the case. These things hold their value. People love them and they hold on to them for a very long time. Finally, if you hit up eBay, you can find all sorts of mechanical keyboards, including original IBM Model M's, some that fetch well over $1,000 US. So things do get pretty crazy the more and more you get into mechanical keyboarding. But there's a reason. The more you get into it, the more you discover that there is to do. So for example, there's modding. You see the keycaps that came in this bag? This is just the very, very beginning. I mean, these are just some fun keycaps to replace, to put on your, your WASD. I don't know if you can see that, W. A S D there they are see that so you can take these keys out of here and you can replace them start modding or if you don't have a Windows as I don't I might replace that wing key with this cool master key but look this is just the very beginning on places like Mastrop you'll find massive numbers of replacement key sets, different colors. In particular, this one, this Coolmaster has this horrible A. Can you see that A? It's, as somebody who's into typography, that A is absolutely revolting. It is disgusting. And look, they've stuck it everywhere. There's the A there, A, A, A. God, it's, it's all over this thing. There's another A there. There's some up here, page down, page up, pause. I mean, God. And I don't know why, the A has nothing in the Coolmaster logo. I don't know why they chose the A to ruin, but they did. And because they did, I've gone ahead and I've bought a new set of keys using PBT plastic. But I'm gonna save that for another video, another day, to show you when they arrive. I'll show you how to mod, how I've modded my keyboard and how to make it. But let me tell you, if you head over to Reddit and our mechanical keyboards, you'll see all manner of things to drool over. There's case painting, metal cases can be bought online, switch replacement, spring replacements. You can entirely make your own keyboard using your own PCB. There's just so much to do, it boggles the mind. People are painting their cases with Plasti Dip, which comes off and uh, look, it's amazing. And it's something I can genuinely suggest. The people in our mechanical keyboards are lovely, they're great to talk to, and they're very happy to answer your questions, as they did mine. Okay, just a little mod that I'm gonna keep doing here. Just gonna keep pulling these arrow keys off. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. Just gonna keep pulling these arrow keys out. Now, the key, the key grabber is really an important tool. You really don't wanna be pulling these out by hand because you could damage the underlying switch. So really, getting this right the first time is the way to go. Here's my D. Just because I'm not a gamer doesn't mean I don't want to have red keys. So there you go. Put that on there. Just move this stuff out over to the side. Man, that is a beautiful, beautiful keyboard. And I can't tell you how beautiful these brown switches are to to type with. They are just something extraordinary. Earlier I was talking about sound dampening, and I just want to let you know that I do intend to do some sound dampening. I, because I'm going to use this in an office, I don't think it's too loud. I think it's actually... I think that it's reasonable. I think if I was doing that in the office, nobody would really notice. But equally, I've bought some sound dampening elastics, and I'll, that's one thing you can do with them, or you can buy landing pads. And I just wanted to say that I do intend to do that, and, and I will post uh, films about those uh, as soon as I can. Okay, one last thing I have to do for the Reddit community is I have to take a picture of my brand new keyboard with a shoe. I don't know why you have to do this, but it's just like the done thing in that in that group. So let me just uh, just move some stuff out of the way here. Make sure I got a nice clean surface.
So many people have so many different cool shoes on there. With me, I'm gonna go with another custom that I had done. That is my cycling shoe. Right, and together they are some pair. Now I'm gonna go and post that over to Reddit Mechanical Keyboards. They dig that sort of thing. But I don't think that this should just belong to the gaming community. Because us enjoying our computers is about so much more. Us as enthusiasts, as tech leaders, it's more than about the next first person shooter. You guys should really check out this community. I really hope you enjoy it. And at the end of it, you're gonna end up with an amazing keyboard that you'll probably keep for life. Thanks for watching. I'll post more videos as soon as the keys arrive and, and I start to customize my board. So don't forget to subscribe. And those links, they're in the about section. The mass drop link, if you use my link, uh, I get rewards for it, which I'd appreciate. Uh, the Reddit mech market, and of course, don't forget, Reddit are mechanical keyboards. Great community, really recommend the guys in there. It's been great. Let me know if you have any questions. Post anything you like in the comments below. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, there's a link in the about section. Keep me posted on any projects or any purchases you guys are up to. Uh, I'm really excited about this new keyboard. If there's any bits or peripherals for your computers that you guys are really into, that you really think I should check out, do send me a note. And uh, if you do ever talk to the uh, other keyboard manufacturers, do let them know that your views count and that you appreciate my videos, because uh, otherwise they just don't seem to know. Thanks again for watching. More soon.